Welcome to Focus on Mid-Ohio, where we take a weekly in-depth look at events happening throughout the area. Now, here's your host, Mike Wilson. Welcome to Focus on Mid-Ohio. I'm your host, Mike Wilson. Focus on Mid-Ohio is a public affairs program of Classic Rock 95.1. And February 15th through the 22nd is National FFA Week. FFA makes a positive difference in the lives of its members by igniting their potential for premium leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. Today's FFA members are tomorrow's leaders of America's number one industry, agriculture. In the studio today are members of the Gilead Christian School, FFA, along with their leader, Mrs. Ellie Nixt. And I'm going to ask each of you to come up to the microphone and tell me who you are and what your office is in the FFA. And we'll start with the president. My name is Derek Goodman, and I'm the president. My name is Preston Chilko, and I'm the vice president. My name is Eric Gray, and I'm the treasurer. My name is Austin Yake, and I'm the parliamentarian. My name is Justin Jones, and I'm the chaplain. And we're going to start off, I believe Mrs. Nix is going to field this subject, uh, about the organization of the FFA. Actually, FFA began as a congressional act. The Smith-Hughes Act in 1917 provided for vocational education, especially in agriculture. And uh, as uh, it rolled out, there was a need for agriculture education and more and more interest in that. So by 1928... The youth of America engaged in agriculture education organized, and the first national convention was held in Kansas City. From there, it has progressed over 85 years and uh, with many achievements um, and also involvement of uh, women along with the young men in the organization. And uh, we're very proud to have a chapter at Gilead Christian High School. Well, next we're going to hear from Eric Gray when he talks about National FFA Week. Each year, FFA chapters around the country celebrate National FFA Week. The week-long tradition began in 1947 when the National FFA Board of Directors designated the week of George Washington's birthday as National FFA Week in recognition of his legacy as an agriculturist and farmer. The first National FFA Week was held in 1948. Today, FFA Week always runs Saturday to Saturday and encompasses February 22nd, Washington's birthday. Very good, Eric. Uh, Mrs. Nix, do you want to tell us about uh, Representative, is it Bucci? Yes, Bucci, and it's from Dark County, I believe. He's a state legislator and has taken a real interest in expanding upon 4-H and FFA in uh, Ohio schools. Um, he has established an initiative for Cincinnati and Cleveland inner city to develop FFA programs and agriculture education. So it's kind of exciting. There are 80,000 jobs unfilled in Ohio, many of them in the agricultural industry, and we need good workers for those. Civilization is a division of labor where everyone has something to offer. The breakdown is when there is not enough people to fill the jobs. So education for our youth should make a difference. It will teach them how to give and how to contribute. Very well said. Uh, Austin Yake is going to share with us now about the uh, Gilead Christian FFA. We elected our officers at the Morrow County Fair around August, <clears throat> and we received our charter from the National FFA in September. We also attended the Green Hand Conference in Versailles, Ohio, which we learned more about the FFA and met a lot of other FFA chapters along with the conference. Um, October 30th, which, which was the same day as the 85th National FFA Convention, we did a ceremony at our school receiving our FFA jackets um, at, during school. And Preston Chilcote is going to tell us what a CDE is, and tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so a CDE is a career de development event. And so for our CDEs, we did forestry judging and soil judging. And our soil judging was held at Headwaters, and it was this District 6 soil judging. And then from there, we were able to advance on to the state um, judging, which was in Linden, Ohio. And then for forestry judging, 
we that was held at headwaters and from there we advanced on to the state forestry judging which was held at hawking college all right and what about in march what's happening in march an invitational in march we will participate in an invitational which will give us experience in equine management dairy cattle wildlife management and agronomy okay as well as nature interpretation general livestock poultry milk and dairy products quality okay justin jones is going to share with us about food for thought grant and uh, the food for thought grant and program and justin is coming to the mic okay um on the 17th of december we went to the farm science review and we walked around for a while and we walked into a booth and we were handed a pamphlet by one of the um by one of the people that run in the booths and it had some information on this food for thought grant we didn't know much about it but um it was hosted put on by ohio small grains and when we learned more inf- when we got more information about it we learned that it was a program to help implement healthy eating and small grains in schools so we were tasked with putting together a um some events at the school to implement the students um, implement healthy eating and small grains into the students' um, daily activities. So we put together a week-long um, thing. It lasted one straight week, and on Tuesday morning we went over to the preschool and handed out some fruit for free. You know, we um, um, we implemented new fruit that we didn't think that they would have tried before, like grapefruit and pineapples and oranges. And we also made homemade homemade granola bars, healthy granola bars for them to try. And we had two buckets, one that said yes with uh, green coloring on the front and one that said no with red coloring on the front. And they were supposed to vote on what they liked best. We gave them little cards that had the name of the fruit on it. And they were to just put the name in the bucket to tell if they liked it or not. And it was kind of funny watching them taste the grapefruit because some of them thought it was lemon. You know, their preschoolers, their imaginations ran wild with that. And some of their faces were pretty surprised when they figured out that it didn't taste as good as they thought it would. <laughs> and then on Tuesday afternoon, we had packaged snacks for the high school students to uh, to take for a snack after school. And we encouraged them to read the labels on the back to check out, you know, the carbohydrates and the fats and proteins and everything, all the um, major nutrients in the food to um, compare different foods with how healthy they may be for your uh, nutrition needs. And on Wednesday morning, we hosted a yogurt parfait for the students to come in at 730 um, a half an hour before school started to get a free breakfast. Um, we had some more homemade granola and we had some fruit that we um, that we had there for their yogurt in the morning. And uh, a number of students came and participated and um, they enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was pretty good. I had some too. So um, Thursday afternoon, we went over to the elementary school and we hosted a snack food science fair. Um, what it was, each member of the FFA had their, uh, we each picked a a topic to represent to the elementary school students like uh, I did water and the importance of drinking water throughout your day I know some people did smoothies and how you can make healthy smoothies to get some better nutrients into your um, into your diet and so each FFA member had their own board that we uh, that we set up um, for the students to see and we have a um, Ag Explore class too and they paired up in groups of two to um, to present their boards and make their boards together and so that turned out pretty well we had note cards for the students to take home um they put them on a little binder ring to take home so that they could help remember help it had a picture and just a little bit of information from each board that was set up to um inform them you know help them to remember about what they learned and show their parents maybe even if they wanted to okay very good And there's a program that you're working on right now. I believe you got a grant for something called Nutrients for Life. Who'd like to share on that? Oh, Derek, okay. Well, along with the Food for Thought grant this year, we got to have the opportunity to do this Nutrients for Life uh, grant, which is called the Nutrients for Life Helping Communities Grow grant. And uh, it's administered uh, FFA chapters all around uh, Ohio. And... uh, a little thing that they put together says, uh, we believe agricultural education should be taught in every classroom, and we value the relationships we have with FFA chapters across this country. The Nutrients for Life Foundation is an education foundation 
dedicated to fertilizer education with a host of scientifically based plant and soil science resources. Nutrients for Life works with teachers and students in grades K through 12. Although the majority of our resources are used in general science classrooms, we have a unique program helping communities grow that is offered to FFA members only. And uh, basically what this is is we uh, are trying to demonstrate to the community the importance of fertilizers um, in our everyday crops and uh, gardens. And the way we're demonstrating this is we have uh, these hydroponic systems and we set them up uh, in Cardington Library, Mount Gilead R Library, and also uh, another partner with us is uh, the OSU Extension Office in Morrow County. They've uh, been a valuable uh, resource and reference for us. And uh, basically what we're doing is taking these hydroponic systems and uh, growing lettuce with them and just demonstrating the importance of the fertilizer and uh, the importance of the uh, macronutrients, which are uh, the main nutrients that a plant needs, like nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And then there's uh, secondary and mi micronutrients that are also uh, very important for helping the plant grow. And it's going to be uh, really uh, visual for the kids and stuff to come to the library and be able to see these displays with the lettuce in them and possibly come back the next day and see if the plants have grown any and it's just a great way for them to learn about this and we also have these pamphlets that uh, the older uh, parents can take maybe or anyone that comes in there that just a uh, little piece of information to take home with them and show them uh, the different nutrients that plant, plants need and stuff. And uh, it's just a great way to spread the knowledge of uh, nutrients for plants and uh, how plants grow and uh, develop. And The interest in this is really strong because our growing population worldwide and farmland's not growing. So uh, the most expedient way is to produce our crops a little more efficiently but also at the same time maintaining water quality and environmental concerns as well. So farmers are really engaged a lot in uh, this discussion. So nutrients, it isn't just like wholesale dumping fertilizer on your garden. It's also understanding the ecosystem and developing our agriculture and our planting needs in such a way that we are good uh, stewards of the environment. I, uh, on the hydroponic system, I understand that you've uh, grown some lettuce and you've been using that someplace in the school, haven't you? Uh, yeah, at the uh, basketball games that we've had, we've uh, provided lettuce for hamburgers and um, any the other things that th sell, sold, sold through the concessions. And um, it's just a great way to get our uh, name out there and to... Uh, demonstrate what this these hydroponic systems can do and how they can grow lettuce and uh, really help feed the world. So, Okay. And aren't there fish involved in this system? We are hoping so. Okay. We are in the process, and it's been a kind of a protracted experience. We're trying to get it, everything up and running. We now have our tanks. We now have a good circulation system. The guys have really been working on the plumbing. And now we're just waiting for the right growth balance of bacteria so that we can introduce tilapia. And we're not sure yet what we're going to put in our float trays in the top tank of our, hydro our aquaponic system, but uh, we are hoping for a fish fry by the end of the year. Let's put it that way. Right. So you can go to the ag room and do go fishing now. Take your rod and reel. And... I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Mike will. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about... A little bit more about what it took to get an FFA cha chapter in the Gilead Christian School. I think there are now all the schools in Morrow County have an FFA chapter, I do believe. That's absolutely true. Morrow County is an excellent example of an agriculture devoted county. And it was rather exciting to be a part of the forefront of that. 
uh, our administrator was approached by some families who have young uh, adolescents and ad- young adults in their families that are interested in agriculture. And if we were going to continue to keep those families in attendance at our school, a real interest in agriculture had to happen. Um, I was really surprised when they asked me to perhaps focus on rolling out the program. Uh, My experience has always been 4-H, and I've had many years uh, devoted to 4-H. And it was a challenge going from green to national blue and corn gold. But it's been very exciting, and I'm very impressed with the FFA program. Um, I'd like the students perhaps to share maybe some of the exciting things I hope they are excited about what they're doing. Uh, maybe some things that have meant the most to them so far in our program this year. Well, let's start with the president, Mr. Derrick. Um, well, the probably the most exciting thing to me is just how we've grown so far and uh, developed a lot of leadership throughout the chapter. And with all these things going on, it gets uh, pretty hectic and uh, kind of stressful and just starting it up this year, and I think it's just kind of cool to see how um, all of us have taken a little step of leadership and uh, um, just developed our skills and um, leadership and other um, character traits that uh, will really help in life uh, later. So, Mr. Vice President, Preston? Um, mine would probably be the soil judging. I really enjoyed that, learning how to um, judge your soil pit and all the information in that because many people think it's like you just go down in the pit and just kind of mess around with it. But no, there's a little more to it than that. It's kind of neat to all the tricks of the trade and all the new stuff you can learn to do that. Okay, who would be next? Our chaplain, Mr. Jones. My favorite experience was probably going to the soil judging. And um, getting to go down in the pits and get dirty and learn how to judge soil. And then um, the car at home, stopping to eat and just uh, having a good time out of school on a uh, on a field trip where we got to learn about the soil. Okay, Austin. What's your title again, Austin? Um, the parliamentarian. That's right. Okay. You may speak. <clears throat> um, probably one of the my favorite experiences with the FFA is going to all the different conferences and seeing other FFA chapters that have been doing this for a long time because a lot of my friends through 4-H and sports activities are in other schools FFA programs so it's um, fun to see them um, and like talk to them and see what they've been doing throughout the years and seeing what they've been doing in their sports programs and with FFA. And we have Mr. Eric Gray and what's your title again Eric? The treasurer. Treasurer. The money is important. They all better be nice to you, right? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, My favorite experience so far is just how much we've learned from the FFA in agriculture. And, yeah, we've just learned so much from Mrs. Next and past teachers. Oh, okay. What would you like to add, Mrs. Next? Well, I would say that I'm learning from them. Um. There isn't a day goes by that uh, they don't show me something that they've learned, perhaps at home or in 4-H, and share that wisdom with me. So we're, it's a real interchange. It's very dynamic relationship in the agriculture classroom. And believe me, uh, there are many teachers, and they aren't all Mrs. Nixt. Now, do you do any woodworking, things like that, in your, in your chapter? Well, uh, last year we took a woodworking unit in the spring, and I think we did it over a course of six or eight weeks, something like that. And uh, it was a great hands-on experience, and that's what's so great about FFA with all the hands-on things that you can do and not just sit in a classroom all day and uh, (laughs) look at a board or something, but you can really get hands-on with uh, like this woodworking that we did, and we're thinking about uh, having a plumbing unit and uh, possibly a little bit of welding also. And uh, it's just kind of exciting to s- see what we'll do next. So, wow. The facilities manager you're building could probably use your help with those things. Just, just guessing, but um, <clears throat> okay. 
Uh, have you all decided what your projects are going to be for the fair this year? I'm sure you have. Looks like Preston's coming up first. Okay, so for this upcoming fair, I'm going to be taking a feeder calf and two steers this year. And I will be also taking a uh, welding project. And I'm really looking forward to the fair this year, so. Somebody else share what you're going to take to the fair. Come on, Eric. Um, This year, I'll be taking two market hogs to the fair. Okay, next, Austin. Um, this year I'll be taking a beef feeder and possibly one to two pigs through the FFA as a CDE, which Derek has already previously mentioned what a CDE is. Derek. Uh, well, this year I'll probably be taking a uh, steer and also a feeder calf along with maybe a side project like welding or uh, woodworking again. So, uh, yeah. And we also have some uh, FFA members who have not previously shown at the fair. Um, the ones that have spoken so far have been involved in 4-H. So uh, we have another component to the agriculture education program besides education and FFA. There's also uh, a project known as Supervised Agricultural Experience. And that is a, a, a plan that each FFA member will engage in uh, developing some kind of a, a program of either uh, placement, an entrepreneurship, research, or an exploration into a career that is ag-related. And um, Justin Jones, I've encouraged, uh, since he has not been at um, the Morrow County Fair as an exhibitor through 4-H, but his dad is very much engaged in communications. Um, I, have, I have suggested to him that uh, he expand upon his knowledge of looking over his dad's shoulder and maybe using that as an SAE. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've done so far, Justin? Yeah, sure. Um, my dad um, has his own um, video business that he's started up, so um, I've been helping him with that. And when this whole um, topic of SAEs came up, when it was time to pick our SAEs, I uh, I had a couple options, and um, when I finally got down to writing my paper about um, my SAE plan, when I finally laid out the plan, I uh, chose to put my um, dad's video business on there because I work for him as a uh, uh, videographer, and a, um, I help him set up and tear down and stuff. And we've actually done videos for um, the Food for Thought grant, and um, we're working on that one right now to kind of help uh, other people see what we've done um, in the program because a video is a lot easier to watch than read a whole long paper or listen to someone talk for a whole long time. So um, it just makes it a lot easier to present our projects to people, have, um, being able to have a video of what we've done. Okay. That looks like it'll work hand in hand with, with the ag program. That's wonderful. As far as events coming up in the very near future, uh, the Ohio FFA convention's just around the corner. It will be in early May and, uh, we will have the opportunity to share what we've done in our Food for Thought grant at the Ohio FFA convention and uh, with along with uh, nine other schools who were selected to be grant recipients of a working grant uh, and give our presentations there. So it'll be exciting to be such a young chapter and be able to share what we've learned. Then National FFA Convention. Can you believe it is coming up October 29th to November 1st. However, this past week I was at a district FFA meeting in Columbus and they all said, to, the advisors said to me, have you got your reservations for National FFA Convention? Well, I looked like a deer in the headlights and thought, oh, I better go back and talk to the students about what we need to be doing. So obviously we're going to be bringing the parents and students together to discuss the costs and uh, the plans for that event which will be very exciting, our first national convention. Okay, so it's really a big deal that a, the school the size of uh, Gilead Christian actually has an FFA. That's quite an achievement. Well, if the administrator and the board hadn't been supportive, we would not exist today. Anybody want to add anything, say anything else while you have a chance to be on the radio <laughs> about FFA? Well, yeah, um, I do know that um, what you said about our small school, I know other schools in the county have actually... Um, too many people trying to join their FFA chapter. 
And so they actually have um, a test or something, I think, that they take. I don't know. They do some some way to filter the people out. And I know that this year we only have eight FFA members, which is exactly the number we need for our officers. So it's uh, interesting to see how big their chapters are and how we're just starting to grow um, as a new chapter this year. The advisors of the county programs have been tremendous support. Uh, there's not a lot of high competition, even though you might think at the fair we're all about competition. Uh, but it's really an, a family feeling when you deal with people in agriculture. And uh, the support that we have received from uh, advisors from Mount Gilead and Cardington and Highland, uh, which we participated in some invitations with, has been just extraordinary. And uh, can't say enough that everybody seems to be willing to reach out to us as we grow in our program. Well, you can visit FFA.org today for more information on how you can support your local FFA chapter and ignite a passion for agriculture in today's youth. If you are a part of a nonprofit organization that would like to be heard on Focus on Mid-Ohio, go to 951rocks.com for our contact information. I'm Mike Wilson for Focus on Mid-Ohio. Join us again next Sunday at 8 a.m. and have a wonderful Sunday. This has been Focus on Mid-Ohio, a public affairs presentation heard each week at this time on Classic Rock 95.1. For information on upcoming shows, please visit 951rocks.com.